Holy crap, Nate's alive. Happy New Year, everyone. For the last four months of 2022, I did not make any videos, and I told you guys that I was having some computer troubles, but now I think I'm all worked out. And I thought this might be a good time to share my thoughts on System76, because that's actually who I tried to get a computer from. This video is mostly going to be a vlog format, so if you're curious specifically about my System76 thoughts and you don't really care about any of the other stuff, go ahead and jump to the timestamp that should be on screen now. It's also worth noting that this video is not sponsored in any way by System76, which I think will be very clear as I go. I paid for the device outright, I did not ask for any special handouts or anything like that, and these are my honest thoughts. So first, let's start with some backstory for those who don't know. When I first joined Surveillance Report a couple of years ago, my computer was optimized for audio but not video because I come from an audio specialty. This resulted in a lot of issues, mostly audio artifacts and low quality exports. Some of you guys may or may not remember some of these. As Henry and I worked through to figure out what the best solution was, he mentioned that he had a PC lying around that he wasn't using. So I went ahead and bought that off of him for cheap along with a spare battery. That's gonna be relevant in a second. Fast forward about a year, year and a half, I don't know, I'm really bad with time. And that brings us to September of 2022 when I went to go visit family. Before traveling, I decided to swap out the batteries in the laptop because the old one was getting kind of puffy and dead, like it would die immediately as soon as I unplugged it. So I decided it was time and what better time than right as I'm about to travel. Well, upon replacement, the new battery wouldn't hold a charge. I found out this is actually kind of normal with MSI laptops. You have to run their battery calibration tool, but for me, it never worked. Apparently what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to like charge the battery all the way and then virtually disconnect the power cable and let the battery run down. And then it kind of gets a feel for the whole range of the battery. But it, because it didn't work, whenever it did the virtual disconnect, it just died and never came back on. I actually tried it several times before I realized I don't think this is working the way it's supposed to. I thought maybe it was doing something while it was off or something like that. Truth be told, this wasn't really an issue. I mean, it was kind of annoying, but at the end of the day, I was back where I started, but I had a battery that wasn't so puffy, so I figured, whatever, I'll just live with it. Plus, I'm usually at my desk or somewhere that I'm plugged in anyway, so it's not really an issue. But if I may quote the Sublime song, that's when things got out of control. For the rest of September, things just went downhill. The power cable became extra touchy. Now, this wasn't helped by the fact that my cats ended up chewing it up, but even without them doing that, it was still really touchy. Literally, if you touched it too hard, it, I guess, would jiggle loose and the computer would shut down. I did end up going and buying a new one, but that didn't actually do anything. The next issue was that the Wi-Fi and the LAN would randomly stop working sometimes. Sometimes it would be both at the same time, sometimes it would only be one of them. And for the record, I don't think this was just like a driver issue because at the time I was dual booting Windows and Cubes and it would happen in both OSs. It's been a while since I took my notes, but if I remember correctly, Cubes, usually the LAN wouldn't work and Windows, sometimes the Wi-Fi wouldn't work. Sometimes at first I could fix it just with a restart, but over time it just eventually stopped working altogether. The final nail in the coffin came when it would crash anytime I tried to do anything power intensive, like launching a high-res video game or video editing, which is kind of a problem considering I'm a content creator. Thus, I decided it was time for a new computer and I figured why not try out System76? System76 is relatively notorious in the privacy community because they make fully open source laptops that are designed specifically for Linux. For the record, I'm not sure if the hardware is open source, but I know they do open source firmware. I had had my eye on one for years and I actually have a friend who's better at computer hardware than I am. He understands like graphics cards and all this kind of stuff. So when I decided it was time for a new computer, I went straight to him and was like, hey, what do you recommend? And he ended up recommending a System76 Gazelle. I had told him before that I wanted one and he was basically like, honestly, I think you should go ahead and get it because you've had your heart set on it for a long time. We talked through my intended usage. He knows that I make these videos. Hi, if you're watching this. And he assured me that it should be up to the task. My plan was to do what I've always done, dual boot Windows, preferably Windows 11 so that I could update the website with the recommended settings and also cubes. Now, real quick, because I know some of the more advanced people in the crowd are thinking it, I am well aware that dual booting cubes with literally anything breaks the cube security model because if there's malware on the other operating system, it could theoretically work its way over to cubes. That's fine. Believe it or not, I don't use cubes because of the security. I actually use it because of the compartmentalization and the fact that that makes it so much easier on my workflow. I don't really want to get into it here because this isn't a cubes review video, but I like cubes because it allows me to have multiple accounts in the program that I want. Like for example, if I want multiple matrix accounts, I don't have to have several different clients. I can use Shieldy chat, which is my personal favorite across all of my different VMs. 
I can also very easily and visually compartmentalize. This is being used for this identity. I don't copy and paste things by accident. It's just really good for my personal workflow. I like it a lot. I'm not saying it's perfect for everyone. It works for me. Having said that, then the next logical response is, well, then why don't you run a Windows VM in cubes? That's because I use Windows for gaming and production and the GPU pass-through on cubes, I'm told, is pretty horrible. That was actually one of the things I wanted to try with this new laptop was get a feel for GPU pass-through and see if maybe that's something I could switch to full-time in the future, but we didn't get that far. Now, I am about to spend the next several minutes really picking on System76 and dragging them. So I actually wanna go ahead and give my overall thoughts up front to be clear, because I don't want you guys to think that I'm just complaining. Overall, I think this probably would have been a great laptop if I was using a distro that it was intended to be used with, like Pop, Fedora, or Ubuntu. But that is not what I did. I tried to use it with Cubes and Windows. Therefore, a lot of the things I tried to do did not work, or at least not as intended. Some of this I do think System76 could have done a better job about, and I'll talk about what some of that stuff is. But for the most part, I think this was really my fault. Like clearly they did not design the tool to work this way, and I tried to use it that way. I wouldn't be mad if I tried to use a fork to eat soup and it didn't work because that's not what the fork is designed for. That's my fault for trying to do it that way. So again, if you're thinking about buying a System76 device and you plan to use Pop or Fedora, including Fedora Silver Blue, or you don't mind a few minor Windows bugs, then I'm sure it's gonna be great for you. But if you use pretty much anything else, you're probably gonna have a similar experience to what I did. You're gonna have a bad time. So starting at the beginning, we settled on the Gazelle laptop. The order process actually went really well. The bank did flag my card because it was a large purpose, so I had to get that straightened out. But after that, everything went through. The staff was super friendly and communicative. And at one point after the order was approved and they assured me everything was good to go, I asked them for an ETA just so that I would know what to expect. I didn't say like, how soon can you get this to me? I literally said, hey, just so I know, What's the ETA? And they told me six to 10 business days for assembly. At this point, my old laptop was holding on well enough that I could continue to like post articles and moderate the community. So I was like, okay, that's fine. And then to my surprise, it actually shipped the next day. I didn't ask them to rush it or anything and they just did. So that was really cool. Unfortunately, they shipped it via UPS. UPS sucks at life and it took them an extra week and a half to get it to me, but that's not really System 76's fault. UPS just needs to reconsider every decision they've ever made in life that led them to this moment. The item shipped on September 27th and ultimately I received it on October 3rd. The problems began literally immediately. My first issue was that Cubes did not want to install. Now, this isn't System76's fault. This is Cubes' fault, or really NVIDIA's fault. Cubes is Cubes. Doesn't matter, it's NVIDIA's fault. Cubes is notoriously incompatible with NVIDIA, which the Gazelle has for a GPU. And in fact is, from what I understand, pretty much the only good GPU on the market. So that's kind of an issue if I want to be a video editor and also use Cubes, but I digress. Now, this is when I discovered that System76's firmware, while technically open source, does not allow you to make literally any changes to it whatsoever. Normally, when I have issues with installing, I go into the firmware, I start tinkering around with settings, and then eventually Cubes works. But this time, I couldn't do anything. The only thing I was allowed to do was update it. I can't make any sort of changes that might allow for an easier install. That same day, I reached out to System76's support and they did tell me that in theory, Cubes should work because they do support Fedora and Cubes uses the Anaconda installer, which Fedora also uses. And actually the DOM0 interface is based on Fedora 32. So in theory, it should work. They also told me that once I get it installed, I should run this compatibility package that they sent me a link to. But other than that, they were basically like, hey, we don't technically support this. So you're kind of on your own. And for the record, that's fair. They don't support it. Like I wouldn't call Dell tech support and expect them to troubleshoot my iPhone. That's not their device. That's not their thing. They don't support it. So that's fair. Thankfully, with the help of a few people who are smarter than me, I was eventually able to bypass the Nvidia card and get cubes installed. There were some issues after that point with cubes, but I will get to that in a moment. Okay, so once I had cubes up and running, my next concern was Windows. Now, as I stated, I was originally hoping to install Windows 11. One, because Windows 11 has better security than Windows 10, and two, so that I could accurately provide recommended settings and hardening options for the new oil website. However, it quickly became obvious that this device could not support Windows 11 because for some reason, Secure Boot was not enabled, and as I said before, you cannot change the System76 firmware. As frustrating as this was, this one was also 100% my fault. Turns out System76 very much has a support page that lists in plain English what models do and do not support Windows 11. So that one was on me. I should have done more research. That said, I do want it to be noted that clearly they do offer limited support for Windows. That will come into play in a bit. 
Ultimately, I just settled back into Windows 10 and moved on. No big deal. Frustrating, but no big deal. Once everything was installed, I began to run into small issues. On the cube side, I never got Wi-Fi or my second monitor working. Now, it's entirely possible that these were cubes related issues. I know on my old laptop, which ran cubes just fine, I upgraded from 4.0 to 4.1 and the second monitor stopped working. I ended up having to do a completely fresh install in order to get it working. On the System76 device, I never really had the time to troubleshoot the issue further due to much bigger priority issues that I will get to momentarily. I did make one Reddit post, which was about as helpful as you would expect it to be. And so, yeah, I never got those things working. Now, again, those could be Cubes issues, those could be Nvidia issues, or they could be System76 issues. I really don't know. On the Windows side, my first issue was that Wi-Fi didn't work. I reached out to System76 a second time for support. And just a personal note here, I called them because they very clearly have a phone number listed on their website and nobody picked up, it went to voicemail. This actually happened every single time. I was never able to get a System76 technician on the phone, which makes me wonder why they even have a phone number. Regardless, like I said, I left a voicemail and they actually got back to me pretty quick within a couple of hours and they sent me several drivers for Windows. To be fair, these were simply the normal Nvidia and Intel drivers that I could have found on my own, but it's still really cool that they sent them all to me right off the bat. And that did fix the Wi-Fi issue. It actually fixed, if I remember correctly, there was like another small issue that it was kind of on my radar, but wasn't really a priority and it fixed that too. So it fixed a couple of issues right off the bat, which was awesome. That said, there were other problems that persisted. Most notably, the touchpad only worked about 25% of the time. And honestly, that's being generous. It probably worked less than that. The screen brightness was never adjustable, which was kind of frustrating. If I had to guess, I would say it was permastuck at about 50%, but I'm not sure. When I reached out to System76 about these issues, they basically said, try the drivers we sent you. And if that doesn't work, oh well. Now, remember earlier I said clearly they do offer some support for Windows. And while these are relatively minor bugs, I kind of take issue with this because they should really do better if they're gonna support Windows. I mean, touchpad and screen brightness are really not unrealistic things to expect them to work. Like I said, they are kind of minor issues, but also they're caked into the device. It's not like a second monitor or something like that where now I'm adding peripherals and at that point it's on me. That's part of the hardware. If you're gonna offer support for that system, you should at least make sure the basics that come with it are compatible in my opinion. So I'm a little frustrated about that one. Now, there was one issue that right off the bat, I felt like was a huge deal breaker and I almost considered returning it right there. And that was that Veracrypt did not work. My Windows drive could not be encrypted unless I was willing to pay for a higher version of Windows like Pro and use BitLocker. And that's just a guess, to be honest. For all I know, BitLocker wouldn't have worked either. I tried this several times. And for the record, I've been encrypting every single computer I have for the last like four laptops I've had. I've also encrypted the last two or three desktops that my wife uses. So I'm not just an idiot who doesn't know how to use Veracrypt. I did everything right and I tried multiple times and it just didn't work. It would always fail the pretest. That made me really uncomfortable because that meant that now anything I did on Windows was potentially accessible by people I didn't want to have access because my drive wasn't encrypted. And by the way, this isn't unrealistic. For example, I usually have Signal synced up on the Windows side so that I can easily respond to important messages when I get them. In the past, I've even done consultations on the Windows side because it's more stable. But even then, that means now I have to make a choice between security and convenience. For example, I use a self-hosted Nextcloud server, and that's where I store a lot of my consultation files. Well, now they're all synced up to an unencrypted Windows drive if I choose to continue to use Nextcloud. I do a lot of cross-device work, and that's just very disappointing. There were a few other BIOS specific issues that weren't really deal breakers, but they were incredibly frustrating. For example, the firmware would often freeze up if I tried to restart. So for example, if I was in cubes and I decided I wanted to go over to Windows to do something, usually I would hit restart and then hold down the proper key to bring up the boot menu and switch. Unfortunately, more often than not, when I use the restart button, it would cause the keyboard to stop responding. It was the weirdest thing, by the way, I could hold down the button and it would go to the boot menu, but then it would just stop responding from there. A lot of the time, the only way to fix it was to completely sign back into my default OS, which was cubes, I mean, completely sign in, like decrypt, sign into my user account and everything, and then shut down and start up again. This one wasn't really a deal breaker because I figured out pretty quick that if I did shut down instead of reboot, it would work. Having said that, it comes with multiple hard drives. 
dual booting is not really that uncommon, especially in the Linux community. Why wouldn't they have better support for this? This was actually remarkably easy to replicate. In this video, I was able to replicate the issue in about one or two tries. Now, the final deal breaker, which I was fully prepared to drag System76 through the mud for, to be totally honest, turned out to not actually be their fault at all. You see, my video editor of choice is DaVinci Resolve. It's extremely powerful. It's actually technically free. It's used by other creators in the Linux community, like the Linux Experiment. And I think even Sun Nudson was trying it out or maybe used it. Nudson? Nudson? I don't actually know how to pronounce your last name if you see this, I'm sorry. It's also really important that Henry from Techlore and I use the same editor because we use it for surveillance report. That's what allows us to be consistent, is us using the same editor because then we have the same fonts, it's easy to update templates that we both share, things like that. When I opened DaVinci Resolve, it simply wouldn't load. It would get to the splash screen and then nothing and I could watch the task manager and see that it just went away. There were no error screens, there were no messages, just gone, as if I didn't even open it. Now, at first I thought somebody's gotta have a solution to this issue, so I downloaded a trial version of Adobe Premiere Pro, and I attempted to use that while I contacted both System76 and Blackmagic, the makers of DaVinci, to try and get the issue resolved. I was like really trying to figure out like, okay, how can I use Premiere Pro? How can I sync it up with Henry for surveillance report? How can we make this work? I really wanted to use this computer. System 76's reply was basically, we don't support that problem, which again is fair, frustrating, but fair. I kind of wish they would have at least looked into it. They didn't even hesitate to say not our problem, even though there are clearly issues with Windows that are System 76 specific, so this might have been their problem. Blackmagic asked for the logs and spent a few weeks back and forth telling me to try this, to try this. Ultimately, we never figured anything out and I told them to close the ticket when I decided to return the device. The final straw was the following. Remember, I said that I had switched to Adobe Premiere Pro in the meantime to try and find a workaround so I could keep using this device. Well, one weekend it was my turn to edit surveillance report. So I spent the entire weekend learning a brand new video editor and editing surveillance report 108 in Premiere Pro. And then the final cut wouldn't export. Like any other tech savvy person, I went straight to the internet and started searching for help. And it looks like this is not a unique problem actually. Premiere Pro is pretty well known for crashing during export because I guess it's just a garbage video editor. I tried a variety of the troubleshooting steps recommended and was still unable to finish anything. For those of you who follow surveillance report, that's what Henry was referring to in the intro of SR 108. Nate has not had a working computer the last month. And so I've been taking over the edits every weekend. And now Nate has tried to edit with a different NLE and it's caused a lot of problems. The NLE really acted up on us. And now I still had to take over the end part of the edit to kind of like bring this all together. I ended up having to export like a work in progress file and sending him all the videos, uh, screenshots, everything so that he could do the final touches and export it. Now, in my opinion, I think it was understandable that I assumed System76 was to blame for this. Between cubes not wanting to install and never working right once it did install, the numerous ongoing Windows bugs that I mentioned, and the fact that DaVinci Resolve worked perfectly without any issues on my last computer, I figured it had to be a System76 issue. So that very night, I contacted them and I said I would like a refund. Now remember, the laptop shipped on September 27th and I received it October 3rd and there's a tracking number to prove this. However, System 76's return policy says 30 days from the date of shipping. Personal note, that's f***ing stupid. Not just on their end, on everybody's end. How am I supposed to spend 30 days testing this device to see if it's right for me when it takes me 10 days just to get it? Especially considering the fact that there is a tracking number, you can easily prove when I got the device and start the 30 days from there. I digress. System 76, of course, replied with, no, you're outside the window, and I pushed back. I basically said what I said to you. I pointed out like, look, I didn't get the device until October 3rd. I have a tracking number proving it. And I also have tickets dating back to literally the same day I received it, indicating that I have been having problems with this device from day one. It's not like something suddenly went wrong and I decided to return it out of nowhere. I have a track record of having issues with this device. They replied with, we'll see if we can make an exception. And then I didn't hear from them again for almost two weeks. They actually took so long to get back to me that we had assumed they had basically just ghosted me and I was starting to make plans on what to do with this laptop. I think the solution we had settled on is that I was gonna trade it with my wife because she actually has a ThinkPad. So I figured she can have the System76, she can put Pop OS on it, which is what she uses anyways, and it'll be fine. And then I can probably put cubes on the ThinkPad because those historically tend to be a little bit more cubes friendly. I also just want to know a personal complaint here. The fact that the Cubes team was so communicative and friendly during the initial purchase, and then the fact that I didn't hear anything from them for like two weeks really kind of frustrated me. 
It was a complete 180 from my initial experience. At any rate, in the two weeks when we were waiting to hear back from them, we made a shocking discovery. The issue wasn't System76, it was IVPN. You see, October 31st, once I realized the System76 device wasn't working, I contacted my hardware friend again, and we immediately figured out a new device that was just a regular old Windows device. It was actually a Lenovo Legion 5, for those of you who care, although it doesn't really matter. At this point, I wanted to go with something tried and true, and Lenovo is historically pretty cubes friendly. I actually even consulted the cubes hardware compatibility list for this purchase. Quick side note, for those of you who are watching this video and thinking, well, you should have checked the HCL before ordering anything to see if this device would even work with cubes before getting upset about it. I've checked the HCL. It is horribly out of date. And for the record, it is entirely crowdsourced by unpaid volunteers. So I'm not gonna like really harp on that and be all entitled and say they should keep it better up to date. My point is that even when I do my research, it's still not a guarantee. The Lenovo Legion 5 doesn't want to install cubes either. It's actually much harder. The same tricks I used on the System76 didn't work on the Lenovo, even though almost every Lenovo device, and specifically the Legion 5, has straight greens across the board. So don't lecture me on that. Anyways, I got with my friend, we picked a whole new device. The new device arrived before System76 got back to me, and one of the first things I did after installing Windows 11 was to test DaVinci Resolve. I opened it, I dropped in a short clip, I cut a segment, I exported, everything worked perfectly. As a result, I proceeded with installing all of my usual stuff, Pro Tools, my audio plugins, video games, etc. And by the time I was done, DaVinci Resolve had stopped working again. It was the same issue that I was having on the System76 device. So I did the usual troubleshooting steps. I started to uninstall everything because I knew that it had worked before. Once I uninstalled IVPN, it worked again. Here is exactly what happened. I have a subscription to all three of the VPNs that I recommend, Proton, Molded, and IVPN. And I cycle through each of them every four months in preparation for my annual reviews. So when I write my reviews for IVPN, I've been using IVPN for the last four months. Around the same time that my MSI, the original laptop I bought from Henry, had started to die, I had just finished my Proton VPN review and had switched over to IVPN. DaVinci Resolve had worked no issues with Proton. And because so many things had changed between the MSI and the System76, and because the System76 had so many Windows bugs, I didn't even think that my VPN was the issue. Normally, that would be part of my troubleshooting, so for those of you who are sitting there going, seriously, you didn't troubleshoot the VPN? You are right to be mad. <laughs> I'm mad at myself that I didn't figure that out. But somehow that slipped through the cracks and flew completely beneath my radar. Personal side note, I am stunned that Blackmagic's customer support never picked up on that issue when I sent them the logs. For the record, for any IVPN users who are thinking about using Blackmagic, it only happens with IVPN WireGuard. It doesn't happen with OpenVPN. It also doesn't happen with Proton WireGuard. We tested this. I went through extensive troubleshooting. I did tell my contact at IVPN and he was very intrigued. I also told the Blackmagic team in case they wanted to actually troubleshoot this, but they never got back to me. I'm assuming they don't have a lot of users using IVPN, so they probably just don't care. But yes, if you're planning to use IVPN with DaVinci Resolve, just beware of that. That's a weird little bug. Switch to a different protocol while you're using DaVinci and you will be totally fine. So like I said, after two weeks, they sent me a return information. And just to follow up on my frustrations, it was literally just that. It was an automated email that was like, here's your RMA information. There was no like, hey, I followed up and we're gonna make an exception for you, etc. It was very cold and not at all as warm and friendly as the front part of the process had been. I mean, granted, I know I'm kind of costing the money, but still, that's kind of petty in my opinion. Maybe petty is not the right word. Unprofessional? I don't know. That email came to me on Tuesday. By Friday, they had already sent me an email saying, hey, we noticed you haven't returned it yet. Is everything okay? Basically, professional speak for bro, hurry up and return it. And again, just to rant, that kind of pissed me off a little bit because for two weeks, it was radio silence to the point where I thought they had ghosted me and we had already made plans to do other stuff with this laptop. And then all of a sudden they're rushing me. That really pissed me off. At any rate, it took me a few days because I had to make sure that I had pulled all the data off the new device, I had to find time to pack it up and drop it off, and at this point, now that we realized it was my fault, we were kind of trying to figure out, like, okay, do we want to keep it anyways and just bite the bullet? But ultimately, I couldn't really bring myself to do that because I was still having so many issues with this device, and it seemed really overpowered for anything other than video editing. It just didn't seem to justify the cost. So ultimately I did say, no, everything's fine. I just needed time to return it and dropped it off that weekend. Okay, so if you've watched this far, 
What is the final verdict on System 76? Would I recommend it to you after everything I've been through? Well, like I said, a lot of the issues that I had were my fault. Like the whole DaVinci Resolve thing, a lot of the cubes issues I had, I don't know for sure they were my fault, but I can't guarantee they were System 76's fault. And again, I wanna point out, I was using the device in a way that they did not intend. As frustrated as I am, I think it's important to be fair about that. They explicitly say that they support Ubuntu, Pop, Fedora, and to an extent, Windows. Therefore, it is not their fault that I put an OS that they don't support on it and then it didn't work. Especially Cubes. Cubes is a notoriously finicky OS. Like that would be if I tried to drive a Ferrari or a Formula One race car and then complained that it was too fast. Like that one's on me. I will give them credit for that. Having said that, there were a few things that I think were their fault and I was a little disappointed by. For example, they do support Windows, so why are there really simple, important features like the trackpad not working? I mean, it's a laptop. Should I just have to carry a mouse everywhere, everywhere I go? I mean, that's not the end of the world, but still, that's not what laptops are about. I shouldn't have to carry a mouse. There's also the screen didn't dim. Like I said, that was really frustrating. And then there's the whole thing about dual booting and how it doesn't work. And the fact that I can't even really make any changes to the BIOS. Like one of the whole points of open source is that it's supposed to be yours. It's supposed to be free software that you can make changes to and modify. And I couldn't even make basic changes in the settings. This seems really antithetical to the whole thing. And like I said, I was also kind of disappointed at their tone once I asked for the return. They suddenly seemed a lot colder and a lot less friendly than they had been. But to be fair, maybe that's all in my head and that's perception, I don't know. I mean, to their defense, it was all over email. And you know, email, text doesn't always convey tone very well. So maybe I'm just making that up because I was uncomfortable. I don't actually like confrontation. Okay, so all that said, aside from the minor glitches, aside from the DaVinci Resolve issue that wasn't even really their fault, I do have some positive things to say about the device. Number one, it seemed like a really quality device. Like, I carried it around with me. I took it to work. I took it to meetups. It did audio editing just fine. I did several things in Pro Tools with no issues. The performance was also great. I gotta be honest, Cubes was blazing fast. I have never seen cubes run that fast before. It was incredible. And all my games were gorgeous. They ran in high resolutions. There was no lag, there were snappy speeds. I mean, granted for the record, I'm not like professional Call of Duty player, but I mean, you know, I like to play a few action games here and there and man, they looked wonderful. So again, I really wanna be fair and drive the point home. I think if I had been using the device the way it was intended, like with Fedora or Pop, I would have had a wonderful experience. Which leads me to my actual answer, final recommendation. If you plan to use Pop, Ubuntu, or Fedora, including Silverblue, on a device that has good hardware specs, or if you're willing to put up with a few minor inconveniences on Windows 10, other than, you know, the inability to encrypt your device, that's kind of a big deal in my opinion. And side note, I can't speak for Windows 11 since I never got it running. Then I think System76 is probably a really good choice. Their support was actually really friendly and they tried to be supportive and helpful. Like I said, when I messaged them about the cubes issue, they were like, hey, we don't support that, but actually if you get it running here, run these and it should run even smoother. And once I figured it out, I actually even emailed them back and said, hey, by the way, here's what I did that worked. And they were like, awesome. We're gonna keep this on file in case anyone else has this issue. So I think that's really cool of them. And of course, I am still a proponent of open source. So even if it's just source available code, it's still really cool that the firmware is open source and that it can be vetted in and examined by anyone who wants to. That's always a plus. That said, if you plan to make any changes whatsoever to this device, like installing an unsupported OS or using primarily Windows, I really can't recommend these devices. They are really buggy, support will only offer you a limited amount of help, and if that doesn't fix it, then you're kind of on your own. And in my opinion, if you're willing to just tough it out and figure it out yourself, you may as well simply start from scratch by going to Coreboot's website and picking a device that they actually recommend and avoid the markup. Although to be fair, in terms of like Linux friendly laptops, System76's markup is really not that bad. I've definitely seen other companies that are charging outrageous Apple type prices for severely underpowered laptops. At least with System76, you're actually getting good hardware to back up the price. So back to the vlog side of things, for those who are wondering how it all turned out in the end, like I said, I returned the System76 device and while it wasn't really my favorite experience, I gotta be honest, I have no hard feelings against the System76 people. Again, they were really friendly. I appreciate that they made an exception for me to return the device. And I think if I had been using it the way they intended, I probably would have had a good experience. As I mentioned, I ended up going with a Lenovo Legion 5. This came ready with Windows 11, which offers massive security improvements over Windows 10. And by the time this video comes out, I will hopefully have added the Windows 11 recommended settings to the website. I actually have them written down 
I'm waiting on a couple more things before I upload it. And I think those will be up by the time this video comes out, but I'm not sure. Also, Privacy Guides is adding a Windows 11 hardening guide that I think is already up. I could be wrong about that, but if not, keep an eye on their website because they're adding one too. One of our matrix moderators actually helped them with that guide and help contribute settings and test things out and stuff like that. So that's really cool. The drawback to the Lenovo is that putting cubes on it is nightmarish. Like I said, I did check the HCL and it was green across the board, but it still didn't work. Now I'm told that it's actually possible. I went to the cubes forums and I tried to ask questions, but honestly, after fighting with the system 76 device for basically a month straight, I'd, I'm just over it. I'm not willing to put up with that anymore. So instead, I will probably end up buying a separate device for cubes. And I'm probably at this point willing to pay the markup for convenience. So I'm probably gonna go with a certified device like a nitro pad, which admittedly is just an overpriced ThinkPad. But at this point, it will come preloaded with cubes. It'll be a separate device. I won't have to worry about it. It's just... I'm at the point where I'm just not willing to keep doing that to myself. I don't know, maybe I'll try buying a stock ThinkPad and just load it on there, but I, I'm worried about that not working either. I don't know, I haven't really decided what I'm gonna do, but I definitely do wanna get back onto Cubes. Windows 11 isn't bad, but man, like I said, Cubes just fits my workflow so well, and I like having that separation there. Plus, if I do the two device thing, then I'm actually using Cubes the way it was intended, and I'm getting all the security benefits on top of the workflow benefits. Now, on that note, I wanna close by saying these were not cheap expenses. Obviously, I am getting refunded from like returning the System76 computer and stuff like that, but this is not the only time I'm gonna to have to buy a computer or things of that nature. The new oil makes a little bit of money, mostly from our partnership with IVPN and our split of the contributions to Surveillance Report, but we are not rich by any means. In fact, just purchasing this laptop pretty much wiped us out. Now, I do still have a day job and the new oil's overhead is actually incredibly low at this point in time. So it's not like we're in any danger of going under, but at the moment, one of my financial goals for the new oil is to have a reserve of funds built up in case we need to like hire a lawyer or something like that. God forbid, but who knows? So if you're willing to help us offset the cost of this purchase, which hopefully at the beginning of the video, I made a compelling case for why this was necessary and I didn't just randomly go out and buy a new gaming laptop, then please consider a one-time contribution or maybe even a recurring one if you can. That actually leads me to my second final note, which is that personally, one of my goals with the new oil is to do this full time. Like I said, I have a day job, but it really cuts into my time. I love the new oil. I love doing this. I love talking about privacy. I love making videos about privacy. I, I really am annoying everyone around me with privacy, <laughs> but I love this stuff. It's what I'm passionate about. I don't do the new oil for money, but to be completely honest with you guys, the new oil is starting to eat up a very significant chunk of my free time. By the time I'm done filming these videos, editing them, queuing up articles, writing blog posts, doing surveillance report, taking notes, just all of this stuff, I don't really have a lot of free time left. Like at all, I don't mean that jokingly. Like there's a lot of times I finish my work and then go straight to bed. I don't get to watch a lot of TV shows. I don't get to spend a lot of time with my wife. I don't really get to see my friends a lot. I basically do day job and the new oil. Now, I just wanna go ahead and acknowledge that's something I put on myself. Nobody asked me to do this and I'm free to quit any time. But like I said, I really like doing this. So if you guys get value out of the videos that I do and the work I do, it would really mean a lot to me if you guys would go ahead and contribute because if I start making more money here, that means I can cut back on my day job and focus more of my attention here. In fact, if every person who watches the new oil on average gave just $5 a month, I could quit my day job completely. For those of you who are unsure, at the time this video publishes, we should actually have our annual transparency report coming up this Saturday. So go ahead and wait for that and see where we've been spending our money and how it's going. You can also check our open collective and see our expenses. So. Yeah, I try to be transparent with you guys. And honestly, I don't really have a flashy lifestyle. So it's not like I wanna go buy Rolex watches and you know expensive cars or anything like that. I really just wanna be able to pay the rent and keep talking to you guys. With that said, I know that not everyone is in a position to financially support this work. And I understand. I, I know times are scary right now financially and I keep seeing headlines that say it's only gonna get worse. So I understand that. And if all you're able to do is non-monetary support, like sharing the video, joining the communities, spreading the word, it is still very much appreciated. Thank you guys so much for doing that. I don't wanna negate that because that really does help. So thank you for any support you can give, whether that's financial or non-monetary. With all that said, we have a full slate of videos lined up for 2023. So I am so happy to be back. 
I would like to be back on cubes, but it's okay. This will get the job done for now until I have the funds to buy one of those. And I'm really excited for the videos we've got coming this year and a lot of other stuff. Thank you guys for sticking with me for almost half a year of radio silence and get ready for some new content this year.